Let's learn about Azure Virtual One, the Azure service that will simplify the networking configuration, the routing between the Azure Virtual Networks and the on-prem networks with full support to the multi-region. But before deep diving into the Azure Virtual One, we'll explore a similar topology model that is the hub and spoke model. So we'll see what how hub and spoke works, and we'll see also the limitations of the hub and spoke that were addressed by virtual one. And from there, we'll explore the different features and configurations of a virtual one. Let's get started. So within a hub and spoke model, we typically have a hub in the middle. And within that hub, we would have components like the Azure firewall, and then we would have also the DNS components, bastion component if you want to, and then a gateway for connectivity with the on-prem networks. And then to that network, we would have other networks connected to it, which would be here at the spokes. So we won't have, or we will have actually one or multiple spokes in peering with this virtual uh, hub. And these different spokes actually will host our applications. So typically each spoke is another subscription, it will host an application and it's impairing with this. So, and it's also configured with a route table so that will send all the traffic to the Azure firewall. And then the Azure firewall will be able to filter that traffic, let it go to the Azure virtual network or let it go also to the internet if you want to. And then we would have connectivity here with the on-premise, whether that go through an express route or a VPN point to site or site to site. So let's say this is my hub that lives within the region number one. Now, if I want to add a second region to my network right here, let's say this is gonna be our region number two. So this is the hub again. So this means that here, again, I should have the same components as the first hub. So let's say here, the firewall, the DNS configurations, the gateway, and the bastion machine. And this we have to might have its own spokes. So it would have multiple spokes actually. And it will also be able to connect to the on-prem network right here. And then between these two hubs, we'll go to establish here a connectivity that's gonna be a global VNet peering in both directions. And this will allow applications from hub one to connect to applications from hub two. So this means that this spoke, for example, will be able to go through the firewall and then through the uh, virtual network peering, then to the second firewall of the second hub, and then to be able to connect to this uh, spoke, for example. And that communication could be in both uh, directions. This also can allow users from the different on-prem sites right here to connect to each other going through that Azure uh, peering and through the firewall and then go to the second on-prem, or they can also go to the other applications. So you can go to connect to this app, for example. And again, this is in both directions. So this means from Azure networks, I can go to connect to the on-prem networks by going through that uh, uh, gateway network. So in order for this to work, as we said, we should configure here the routing. So we should configure a route table for each uh, spoke right here. And we should also configure routing within the uh, hub networks. And then we should configure also DNS, of course. In addition to the firewall rules, in order to allow or deny the traffic between those different components. And those configurations actually makes it a little bit difficult to implement this model. If I have just one hub, maybe that's simple to do. If I have a second region, then that will add a little bit to the complexity. But now if I have N regions, then this model will be really a nightmare to do because here I need to, to peer all those hubs all together. So this means that hub should be peered to all of the other hubs right here, and they should be peered to each other. And then we need ourselves to manage that uh, uh, peering and those routing and the network flow in this case. And here things becomes a little bit complicated because we would have routing rules all over the hubs and the network flow will become a little bit harder to debug and to trace. Due to these complexities, Azure comes up with a new architecture type or a new topology that is the virtual one, where it will aim actually to resolve this issue. And with virtual one, you embrace a model where the network will be managed by Azure. So here we're talking about the network as a service. And by the network here, we 
we specify it's going to be the hubs, all of the hubs, because all the complexity of managing the network, actually, it's not the spokes, but it's concentrated on those hubs. So what if now, if Microsoft can manage those hubs for me? And that's what we'll see with the Azure Virtual One. So I'll switch here to the Azure Virtual One architecture, which will be actually similar to the hub and spoke model. It's could be actually could be seen as a continuity to the hub and spoke model and you can migrate from the one to the other and with hub and spoke or with virtual one model now we would have the equivalent of the hub and the hub and spoke model which will be called the v hub virtual hub this virtual hub now will be connected to all of our spokes so our spokes will be right here and then i might have another spoke right here and they can also choose to host another firewall within this hub. So that the traffic here that will leave one app from one spoke to the other spoke could traverse the Azure firewall, where here we can go to uh, log and filter that uh, traffic. So let's say this is our implementation for region number one. Now, if I have a second region, region number two, then I'll just go to replicate the same architecture, where here we would have another vhub for the second region with an Azure firewall. So here I'm talking about the Azure firewall, but this could be anything uh, NVA from our third party providers like Zscaler, Checkpoint and, and others. And then here again, we would have the spokes connected to that virtual hub from the region number two. So here the way that we'll manage the routing between those different spokes from the different vhubs is not mainly through the route table as we have done before with the hub and spoke topology, but here actually we'll use the virtual one features. So first of all, our virtual hubs will be part of a virtual one, which is a large network that right here that will span across multiple regions. So this is our virtual one. And through that virtual one, we're going to connect those different virtual hubs together so that they can communicate together and applications from different virtual hubs can communicate together. So this app from this spoke, for example, can go to connect to this app from this spoke or from other spoke. And again, that communication will be bi-directional. Now we said that virtual one will make this routing very easy to manage. And the component that will do that for us is called routing intent. Routing intent is like a route table, but here, instead of specifying the exact rules, I want this route to go to, to this IP, and then I specify all the rules that should be hard coded with their CIDR range addresses. With intent routing, I just specify how I want the overall network to happen. So here to each virtual one right here, I can go to specify routing intent, which is going to be a configuration file where I can say, for example, all the internal routing or internal uh, traffic actually should go through the firewall. And here when we say internal uh, traffic, so this would be the RFC 1918 uh, side ranges, which are the 10.0 slash 8.172 and 192 uh, slash 16, for example. And then of course you can add your own other ranges if you want to, but by default will be applied to these uh, ranges. And those are the ranges we typically use for our uh, virtual networks or for our spokes. So this means that this rule could be applied to all of the vhubs within the virtual one. So here, instead of creating a route table for each spoke with the specific rules, here we write one single intent that will be applied for all of the vhubs. So this routing intent will be applied to the vhub and it will also be applied to the different spokes. And it's up to you to choose whether to apply it for your spoke or not. So you can exclude this spoke, for example, to say, I don't want this routing intent to be applied to this spoke. And that will avoid advertising the uh, routes from the other spokes to this one because that's what the routing intent will do. It will apply or it will advertise all the routings of all the spokes to all the other spokes so that at the end we would have like a mesh model where all the spokes can communicate together. The components of the virtual hub will be or, or of the virtual one will be actually the virtual hub, the spokes, but also we would have the on-prem networks that will be able to communicate with the Azure spokes or the Azure network. So we can add to our architecture here a connection between this virtual hub 
through a gateway and to the on-prem networks. Where here again we can use the same connectivity tools that we can use within the hub and smoke model like the express route and the VPN gateways whether that is site to site or point to site VPN. And again we can have a non-prem for each region so a non-prem connected to the region one because maybe that's the branch connected to that uh, region one and another on-prem connected to the region number two again connected through a gateway and then that gateway will provide connectivity to the on-prem in region two. Now once we have this connectivity between the Azure networks and the on-prem this means that here the on-prem actually can go to connect to the Azure virtual networks, whether those are networks connected to the same virtual hub that lives within the same region as the on-prem, or it could also be other ne virtual networks connected to other virtual hubs like this one here, for example. And it can also go to connect or enable connectivity from different on-prem or different branches from different regions. So this one here can go to connect also to this uh, on-prem within the first region and again the communication will be bidirectional for both sides. And now if I want to add another region right here then I just create another virtual hub within that other region that let's say that's going to be the region number three and then the v1 will connect that region or will connect those two virtual hubs together automatically for me and it, so it will establish the connectivity with the second region but it will also establish the connectivity between or with this first vhub right here so those ones will be connected to each other within a virtual one we can also apply some of the architectural patterns that we use within the hub and spoke model like for example using the pattern of shared services. Those shared services could be, for example, a specific spoke for DNS, where here we might have the D our DNS servers, for example, or we might have also another spoke dedicated for the shared services. This will contain things like the uh, private endpoints that will provide connectivity to the storage, to the databases that are, will be shared across those uh, spokes. And that was a simplified architecture that uses the virtual one. I hope it was helpful. Thank you.